Okay, you came to Power BI meets UX design. I feel like I assume you work with Power BI, but could you please raise your hand if you are working with Power BI or if you have ever worked with Power BI? Okay, great. Um, so, it, it doesn't matter how long you've been working with Power BI, uh, but I'm just wondering if you ever heard any of the following statements. Um, I mean, not really statements, but have any of these scenarios really happened to you in real, uh, in real life? So you create a report, you spend a lot of time and effort, and then you present it to your boss or your client, and they're not happy with it. Has this happened to you? For example, they say they don't understand the report, they cannot see any insights over there, they cannot um, take any action based on it. And what about any last minute requirements? Like the deadline is in a couple of weeks and they're like, hey, you know, why don't we add, uh, add, just add this couple of KPIs to the report? Has this happened to you? Okay, and I love this one. Well, it's couple of days before the deadline and they're like, we have just this one more table. It's not a problem, right? Like we can just squeeze it in. We just need one KPI from that one. Has this happened to you? Okay, you're in the right session. <laughs> so this is why you actually need the design process. You really need to understand the users. You really need to understand their challenges, their pain points, and the actions that they want to take from the report. And we'll come in a bit to that, but just briefly as an introduction for those of you who don't know me. My name is Elena Drakulevska, and uh, I'm a BI consultant at Vitelligent, which is a data consultancy company. Um, I live in Vienna, and since January this year, I'm also the creator of Moon Story, which is uh, a blog about uh, Power BI and UX design. Like Those two are my greatest passions. Uh, obviously, I started speaking about this topic last year, and yeah, you can find it at moonstory.design. And a bit about my background. So my background is in telecommunications engineering. I studied in Milan, Italy, where I did my master's degree. And then I moved to Vienna and uh, three years ago. And ever since, I've been working with Power BI. So um, yeah, this is my LinkedIn profile. I'll, I'll share my details at the end as well. So today I'm just going to give you a brief introduction into, UX into the UX design process, and then we'll go over the stages. So we'll talk about empathize, ideate, define, prototype, and test. Um, if you're hanging around here today, uh, just so you know, I have another session that's also called Power BI meets UX design. But there, over there, I'll be talking about creating accessible, intuitive, and visually appealing reports. So take this as a bit of an intro to what we are going to talk about today. And um, for some of the things that I won't go into details, like how do you actually um, make your reports more accessible, please come tomorrow. I think it's at two something. <laughs> I need to check. OK, so to understand UX design in general, so not only in context of Power BI, um, I want to ask you, like, has it ever happened to you um, to pull a door that you were supposed to push. Okay, I see people nodding in the audience. <laughs> and probably the better question would be, how many times has this happened to you? And this happens a lot to all of us, and I just want you to know that it's not your fault. This is a classical example of bad design, and is what we call a Norman door, uh, named after the design guru called um, Design Guru Don Norman. So he's kind of the father of UX design, and he, start, he really contributed a lot to this topic. And it all started with a simple question. How can something as simple as a door be so confusing? There is not so much you can do to a door, right? You can either open it or close it. And yet we all struggle opening doors. And to give you another example, um, so obviously UX design is not about the design. UX design is how a person or the user feels about interacting with or experiencing a product, in our case, a Power BI report. And to give you another example that you kind of feel it in everyday life is uh, when you walk in around a park or around an area that has like these pathways, have you seen this like on the left side over here? So a lot of people are not following 
um, the pathways. And why is that? Because yeah, the UX design part or the UX research part was kind of um, forgotten about. So the idea of UX design is not creating something that we think the users would like. It's about creating something um, that really answers to their needs and their pain points. So we really need to understand how the users feel uh, and how it feels to be in their shoes. So as I mentioned, the, uh, the design process follows the empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. And we'll start with the first phase that's called empathize. So this is what we, I just mentioned a um, couple of minutes ago. So it's really important to understand how the, how the users would feel while they're experiencing our products or our Power BI reports. And in this phase, we really want to uh, understand the users. So we really need to understand the requirements that they have out of a report. Uh, we need to understand their goals. We need to understand what they're, what, what's the action that they're planning to, uh, to take based on the report that we create. And it's also about understanding the user's challenges and pain points while they are uh, navigating a report. And in this phase, so to better understand the users, we can, the best way is to observe the users. So if we observe the users um, using a report, you would see what are their struggles, what they cannot understand, and so on. And you can also, for example, um, uh, do stakeholder interviews uh, with all the stakeholders. And now, funny thing, what usually happens is when you start creating a report and you have a client, and I mean, this has happened to me a couple of times. So I go over there and I'm like, OK, I really need to talk to all the users that are going to use the report. And the client comes and says, well, you should talk to me. I will be using the report. And you can take my, um, yeah, um, my preferences into account. And I can answer all your questions. And I'm like, it's not how it works. <laughs> because different people have different ways of thinking, different ways of understanding and making sense of the world. Um, so you really need to, to talk to all these users to understand their different types of challenges that they face. And what you can also do in this phase is like, if you have a, really a lot of um, users, you can all, also send out surveys and um, yeah, um, take their answers in that way. But I really do think that you should really take the time to talk to the users and really conduct these interviews on your own. And this phase actually helps us get rid of bias, because everyone has bias, right? So even if I have some idea how I'm supposed to create a report, it's not always going to be the same. Um, take, for example, yeah, you should place the most important information in the top left corner, because that's how, where our eyes are going to go, and the least important information in the bottom right corner. And this is, like, for example, a very good rule of thumb, right? But um, if you create reports in a for a country that reads the other way around, like not in a uh, Western uh, language uh, like English, then you need to create the report uh, with the placing the most important information right top corner, top right corner, and least important information, bottom left. So this phase helps us really gather this information from the users. And then we get to the define phase. And in the define phase, so now we've conducted all the interviews, we've gathered all this information. And in the define phase, we really want to have a clear problem statement. So we really need to understand what's the problem is that we are trying to solve. So you really need to know what your report is trying to, to say. Um, and to help with this, the most important, another very important step would be creating personas. And I know a lot of people are skipping this step. I know I have been skipping this step in the beginning especially. Because, you know, you don't have time to do this, right? So you just get the data, and you get the requirements, and you start creating a report. But it's not how it works. Because different people, um, yeah, as I said, have different um, worldviews, have different challenges. So you should strive to um, create around three to five personas. You, what you shouldn't do is create just one. Because one is not representative of the whole group. 
And I'll give you an example. So for, um, you have C-level executives, right? So those people would like to concentrate on some big picture numbers where we're going to take um, some strategic uh, decisions. But you have a person that's a bit more visual, um, or you have a person that's really used to seeing tables and numbers or wants to export to Excel. So in order to make this flexible and in order to, um, to answer to all these needs and different types of needs that different types of users have, you really need to try to create these user personas that are representative of this group of people. And what should this user persona um, consist of? So you should really define what's the demographics. I'm talking about age, gender, what's the occupation, where they live, um, and yeah. And then you need to, uh, to write the bio. So what's their background? You need to pay attention to the motivation. What is driving this person? What are they motivated by? And two very important parts of the user persona are the goals and pain points. So what do they want to achieve with the report? What are the actions that they want to, to take based on the report? And most importantly, what are their pain points? What are their struggles when they are navigating a report? And I have here two examples. Uh, just going to go briefly over this one and the second one you can uh, see from the slides. Um, so we have here the CFO, right? So uh, the main idea of a CFO is, the is uh, guiding the strategy of a company. And the goals are to, um, yeah, to have a report that provides this insight, uh, like cash flow ana analysis, budget variance, and so on. But the biggest pain point is uh, to access the data in a timely manner. And she needs to take uh, strategic be able to make strategic de decisions based on that. And for example, if you have a, if you have a middle level manager, um, like a sales manager, they'll be concentrated on another thing. So they cannot have, I mean, one report wouldn't answer to do both those needs. Or you have a financial analyst, someone who really works with the data day to day. So they would also concentrate on different things. And it's important to pay attention to those things. And another important uh, part from this here is the accessibility part. So really, you should try to incorporate accessibility, which is different users struggle with different things. Or you have people who have visual impairment problems, for example. So you really want to take into account these things. You really write it down. And when you have a, a name, a person's name, you have their demographics, you can really put yourselves in their shoes and really try to understand how they are navigating on report and what their pain points may be. And once you have all this, this is where we get creative. So the ideate phase is one of, yeah, I mean, all stages are super important. But in the ideate phase, we need to come up with as many ideas as possible. So this is a phase where we can do brainstorming, we can do mind mapping, like connecting ideas together. You can also do some sketches, which is also nice for visual people, of course. And we are uh, creating reports, so it's like the visual part is really important. And what you shouldn't do in this stage is you shouldn't judge. You shouldn't judge any of the ideas that you come up with. So it's kind of quantity above quality. The important thing is to come up with many ideas, and only then you can mix and match, you can iterate and refine your ideas. And when you do this, for one page of your report, uh, you settle in the end for one of the ideas. And then you kind of repeat the process again for the rest of the pages for your report. So now some things would be similar, right? So if you settled on where you put the navigation, where you put the slicers, then you kind of already have an idea where this information around the page should be, and you want to stay consistent for the rest of your ideas. But um, so you already have this structure, and you then create a bunch of, you come up with a bunch of ideas for the, rest, for the rest of your pages. And then it gets interesting. Then we come to the prototype phase. And in this phase, you really want to connect all your pages um, so you can understand what's the click path that a user would take 
once they are uh, using the report. And there are different types of prototypes. I mean, the easiest way would be to hand sketch. Uh, you can also create a digital one. And I mean, high fidelity prototype in Figma would be, you know, the goal. But I understand that not everyone can, uh, can do it. And it's, it's time investment. It's also probably money investment and so on. But you know, try to keep it simple. If you are working with paper, then you can create a bunch of screens, and you can navigate, uh, and you can show the users what the journey would be. So if you click here, then you would take, be taken to this screen. If you have a drill through, for example, then how you go back to it. Now, those things are really important. And you really need to pay attention to those things, because you want the users to understand how they can easily navigate the report. Um, and once you create all that, you need to test. So you need to test with users. Now, keep in mind, we are still talking about not implementing things in Power BI. I mean, you can create a prototype or a basic version of a prototype in Power BI as well. Just start with simple data uh, with some screens. You don't need to create all the screens just so that users can have a better idea. I mean, it's always better to test and prototype even before implementing in Power BI, but if that's your thing, if you want to create it in Power BI, you can still do it. Just make it a simple version so you can test it in advance. So the earlier you test, the, the earlier you test, the earlier you fail. But that's what you want. You don't want to create a whole report, uh, invest months in this, and only then uh, to test it with real users and get this feedback. So it's really important to test. So you should pay attention and think about how you create those feedback sessions. Ideally, as I said in the beginning, you would observe a person, how they are navigating the report, how they are navigating the solution. And you're taking notes. So you should leave the users, navigate, and comment on top. Like, how are they thinking? Where do they think they need to click? How long it takes them to go over this path? Um, and as you write these notes down, you should gather this feedback, you should organize it, and you should plan what are the things that are most important to be taken care of in advance, what are their priorities, and what are the nice-to-haves. So if you have the time, yeah, sure, nice-to-haves, but the important things like accessibility, for example, or if someone cannot really find the back button, you know, you should really uh, incorporate this feedback and iterate, right? So test, uh, feedback, and um, iterate. So. This is the whole process that we discussed, right? Empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. But the thing is, this is not a linear process. This is a circular process. So always, you can come back to the previous stages, and especially from once you start testing, it can, always, it can go back even to the ideate phase. And that's totally fine. And if you th remember just one thing from this session today, is that you should always put the user in the center. So really focus on the user's needs. Test, test, test three times, because it's that important. And oh, once you have this testing and feedback, try to iterate and incorporate this feedback back in your report. I have some tips and resources over here. Uh, I have the design of everyday things, which is a book by Don Norman. Um, the UX design course that I took from Google, uh, they offered a scholarship, so that's how I got in. But I know that they're offering a lot of scholarships, so you can uh, for sure uh, catch one. And Figma and Adobe are the tools that I've, I've been using for uh, creating uh, prototypes and so on and testing. I can recommend them, but I understand not everyone can use them, which is totally fine. Just find another. Just concentrate on the thing that you can do and go with that. And with that, I just want to say thank you. I didn't leave you time for questions, unfortunately, but I'll be around if you want to, um, yeah, if you have anything you want to discuss. Also, tomorrow I have another session. Feel free to join over there. We'll, I mean, there'll be more Power BI than this, I promise. And these are my contact details. And please don't forget to leave me feedback. I would really appreciate it. Thank you.